Hello everyone and welcome to Anthropological Facts. Today we will be talking about our ancient hominid ancestors and various species leading to contemporary Homo sapiens. We will also present unique characteristics that each species possessed. Now let's get started. Radiocarbon dated around 3 million years ago. Footprints were found in a valley within the present day East African country of Tanzania. These footprints, known as the Latoli footprints, belong to the species Australopithecus afarensis. What's remarkable about these footprints is that they not only originated from a genus that gave rise to the genus Homo, but they also exhibited some of the earliest examples of bipedalism. Although there is much debate on which species precipitated the Homo genus, the common consensus is that Homo habilis was the first Homo species originated around 2.5 million years ago in East Africa. Homo habilis' name means handyman, and this is attributed to the fact that many Odawan's tools were found in close proximity to his remains. These lower Paleolithic period tools were considered to be chopping tools and were created by taking one piece of stone and striking another to create sharp pieces of shard. The shards were then used to cut both plants and animal material. That leads us to a major question. Was Homo habilis a hunter? Based on remains tools, archaeologists believe that Homo habilis was a scavenger and retrieved his meat sources from animal carcasses that were already hunted by larger animals. Around 500,000 years later, Homo habilis gave rise to another Homo species, Homo erectus. Compared to his Homo habilis ancestor, Homo erectus possessed a larger brain with a cranium capacity range of 800 cubic centimeters to 1,000 cubic centimeters, while Homo habilis possessed only 600 cubic centimeters. This larger brain proved to be quite advantageous for Homo erectus as this hominin produced more complex tools known as Acheulean tools. These tools were essentially Odawan tools from the lower Paleolithic period, but were further modified for a variety of reasons. For instance, similar to Homo habilis, Homo erectus used tools to scavenge. However, research shows he may have also used tools to become the first hominin species to hunt. He was a widely distributed species, appearing in many parts of the world, including South Africa, Southwest Asia, and even East and Southeast Asia. Various theories have been proposed on how contemporary Homo sapiens emerged, including the multi-regional theory and the Outer Africa theory. The multi-regional theory holds that Homo erectus populated Africa, Europe, Asia, and parts of Sunderland, and from these locations, Modern humans independently evolved from the Homo erectus corresponding to their areas of origin. However, the most widely accepted theory is the Outer Africa theory. This theory proposes that a subbranch of Homo erectus, Homo hadoburgensis, evolved in Africa around 600,000 years ago and gave rise to Homo neanderthalensis. Homo, Denisova, and Archaic Homo sapiens. The youngest of the three, Archaic Homo sapiens, emerged in Africa around 300,000 years ago. The cranium capacity this hominid species exhibited was larger than any of his predecessors and was measured between 1,200 to 1,400 cubic centimeters. This group migrated within and out of Africa approximately 60,000 years ago, colonizing all inhabitable continents by 1300 BCE and evolving into anatomically modern Homo sapiens. This group of hominids is by far the most complex, successful, and productive out of all hominids and possess a current population of over 8 billion people. In my future videos, we will be showcasing a multitude of distinct ethnic groups. In doing so, we will be delving into their cultural differences, history, and genetics. In addition, we will highlight various controversial topics. 
Thank you for your time, and I look forward to communicating with you all in the near future. Sampai jumpa lagi.